All right, this, it's all sewed together now. Now we're going to put the front and the back together so it's one piece. First thing we need to do is find the middle of the bottom. Now, it should be the middle of this pattern right here. But things change, so we're going to check it by running a yardstick across it. 12, it's 25. almost 25 and a quarter. So half of that would be 12 and a half and an eighth, which would really, this is 12 and a half right here. I'm going to leave it the eighth off because it's not worth worrying about. I'd rather have it even with the middle of the vestment. All right, so this is, we mark it so we can find the middle on this side. Now we need the middle of this one. This is the front piece. And again, it should be here. And that's 22 and a half. So like 11 and a quarter, which would be just about right. Again, it's a, a fraction off, but rather do it this way. Now I'm going to put the two together, two pins, two pieces. This is the middle and here's the middle here. Uh, so I really need to go over a little bit more. And that should be the middle. They should both be together now in the middle. Now, the next is to find the middle at the top. Again, we're going to do that by measuring across. I want the same space on this side and on this side, and then I'll know I'm in the middle. So this is six inches to this edge, and this is seven inches. So let's take over half an inch. Now this is six. This is six and a half. And now quite six all right now six and three quarters should probably do it yes all right so now I'm going to pin these two together down about down a ways from the top just so they don't move around because I'm going to be working in this area up here Now, you have to be able to get into this part here, and I started sewing the trim an inch down so that I can get in there. Even still, I'm going to have to clip this lining. So that I can get it all the way in. I don't need these pins here anymore. And over to the edge. Now these, these shoulder pieces move up and down. And so we want to make sure that their opening is the same on both sides. So we're going to measure from the top point where it folds over here at the neck to where it meets the chest here. 
and this is nine and a quarter. I'm going to put a pin here just so it doesn't move. I'm probably going to have to readjust this, but and on this side it's nine and a half. So I can either make this one come out a little bit more or this one come in a little more. How much room do I have under here? I've got a lot of space. So I'm going to have this one come out. So I want nine and a half. And that's nine and a half on this side. And so I'm going to pin it down a little ways. See, there's not a whole lot of, that I can pin there, so I'm going to have to put it in a little further. All right, so what is it now? Nine. I've gone down to nine inches. I need to have nine inches too. So this has to come in quite a bit. Why is it off so much on one side or the other? It's just in the cutting. Something else that was done, I don't know. And point to that point is nine inches. something in here. Oh, I see. It's the pin. It doesn't want to go down all the way. I'll try it again. Now I'll try it. Nine inches. Nine. There's nine inches right there. Okay, I'm pinning through these three, all these layers, but I'm not the back. Same on this side. I'm going to just double check this now. It's fine. Nine from here to here. Measure more than once. Measure several times on both sides. The fabric moves. want to really make sure that you've got it even. Now it should be, both of these should be the same, and they are. All right, now that we have it where we want it, now we have to, we can take out these pins because we want to go to the other side and fix the lining. Now 
all this extra seam allowance I put here was there for a reason. I want to. I'm going to fold this down underneath to this raw edge because I'm right off, almost to the top of the. Pull this down here closer. I'm folding this lining fabric inside. And I want it to meet the raw edge of this, actually a little above the raw edge of that. I've got a lot of extra fabric here, more than I need. I want to cut off a little extra. because it's hitting the pins when I turn it, and I'd rather cut off the fabric than move the pins. Okay. It has to go all the way to the ends, and it has to be just above this raw edge in the middle. And then I'm going to pin it really well, all the way across, with the heads way out of the way. In fact, it's better if I put the heads this way, up, beyond. Now I'm going to put them this way. So that when I sew across this, the head, I'm not getting the heads. Again, I'm right handed and I want the heads on this side. Not because I'm right handed, I want the heads on this side because I want them out of the way of the trim I'm going to be sewing on the other side. Because I'm right handed, I want the, the pins to go this way. Now I'm putting these pins about half an inch to three quarters of an inch apart because again, I want, I'm going to be sewing from the other side. And if I, as I sew across from the other side, the, the, the feed dogs on this side will pull the fabric and sometimes you'll get twists in the fabric like this if you if you don't have it pinned closely if you give the fabric enough room to twist it will guaranteed but does it matter if you forget that does it matter do you have to rip it out i wouldn't all of this is going to get covered with tape twill tape um,
adjust it. Right here I'm going through several layers of tape. Same on this side over here. So it's really well pinned all the way across. I'm gonna put one more in there. And the heads are up out of the way. And now I can turn it over back to this side. This is what we have front and the back together. You can see that the this is a little bit higher than the um, raw edge the top of the, this side of the fabric. I'm going to take out these pins because they'll be in the way now. But leaving all of these pins that go across on the other side. Now this is what I was talking about with this tape that I didn't put a false top on here because whether I would run whether I because if I had put a false top on here then I would have had this tape to run across here and rather than do that I think it would look a lot better just simply to run this tape all the way across. And I don't have to worry about the false edge, the false um, top. This will, this will make the top and it goes a little bit beyond, but that's fine. It's going to, now again, when you get to the end, you have a couple things you can do. You can wrap it around to the back, which is not what I do with the tape this wide. Uh, on the back side, it would get covered by the twill tape. The twill tape isn't this wide, so here I would, wouldn't do that. I want this one, though, this burgundy one, to be in the middle. So I'm going to put that here. Cut out a piece of this tape off. All right. And I'm going to... Again, with stitch witchery, these threads out of the way. With stitch witchery, I'm going to put down this this tape where I want it. I want it to be here in the middle, right up. You can see this, right up against that lining edge. Not the raw edge down here, the lining edge right here. And I'm going to put a pin here for now just to hold the center of this. And I'm going to turn under the edges and I'm not going to wrap to the back. So I'm going to stop the stitch witchery about an inch before the end. So I need this much stitch witchery from about here to here. And I'll stick that under. Okay, right from there to there. And my iron a minute to heat up and I'll do the same with this side from here to here and they're stopping right about almost the edge of this. It's a little bit further, but not much. And hot enough 
enough yet. turn the ends here and because this is a, s a slanted edge here I want to kind of slope this which means that'll stick out so I can't have that so I'm gonna have to cut that off and stitch with it back Put some in the pocket, just like I did other times. Not really glued down, it's just gluing the piece here. Now I need some underneath it to actually hold it down. I'm going to put a pin there just, just to uh, safeguard it because I want to flip it around. Do the same thing on the other side. so long piece here. Yeah, this time I think I'm going to glue it before I cut that stitch with you. Where'd you go? Surprised you weren't on the iron.
And now we're just going to sew across. We're going to sew across here. Now that's going to catch all of those parts in the back. There'll be a second sewing across here, but this is the important one because this is where everything's doubled over in here. And so I'll sew this one first and then this one. And then the front and back are connected and all we need to do is put the, the tapes on the back for uh, father to use. I don't need this pin here because it'll be in the way. Father to use to um, uh, close it. So I need bobbin thread, this color bobbin thread, but I already have that in the machine from having sewn this, the line, the, the trim around the edge. And this top thread. So I will sew it and it should take about a minute and be back. All right, I finished sewing it. I have to take, get to take out all of these pins and cut threads here. You can see on the back the two rows of stitches. And by pinning it really well, I didn't get, you can see this up here? Let me show you. Keep forgetting that camera's range. You can see the two rows of stitches. And by pinning it really well, it's a nice line. It doesn't have a lot of, there's no um, little tucks in it. No twisting. Now I need to put tape on this side because this is the type of vestment that meets at the front. Um, the, it lays at the front of his chest. The, there's tapes there to, for the priest to secure it so it doesn't keep riding up. It doesn't, it's not resting on his shoulders like the, it is resting on his shoulders, but not in the same way as a, a shoulder vestment does. Uh, so you need about four yards of tape. Uh, you can, I have this twill tape, this is four yards, and you would find the middle of it, and you would put it right at the top there, and you would secure it, and pin it in the middle, and if you have a four yard piece it's a lot easier because you would, you, what you would do is sew back and forth on the ends here and on this end back and forth a couple times so that it's, it's really tight there. Then you go back and maybe hand stitch or tack it about five different places, four or five places in the middle and a maybe twice on each side of that so that it doesn't loop up and grab things. It won't hurt. It's not like it's not likely to grab too much. So that's if you have a four yard piece. If you don't, then you're then you have to use two yards Joann's, you know, the, the tape that comes in Joann's, sometimes called hem tape, twill tape, whatever. It's a synthetic tape, so you have to, um, if you cut it, you have to melt the end, burn the end, or sew it across, or it'll unravel once it gets started. Otherwise, you can just, um, you can just use the piece as it is. It comes in two yards packages. And if you're going to use twill tape, if you're going to use this tape, I'll show you the difference. You would sew it. You would put it on this side, the tape going that way. You would start on this side, the opposite side. So it's going to get reinforced twice. You would put it here, and then you would put it here on the, uh, to the other side. And then the pin, then the one that's going the other direction, again, you would, I usually turn the end under. You would start it here on this side and run it this way. And then you would do the same thing. You would sew back and forth across here at this end 
and back and forth across here at this end. And that's so that, that when he tugs on it, and they do tug on it, they tug hard on it. They'll wrap it around, it goes from the front around the back and back to the front, and when it come, they come to the front, they get this yank to tie it in, to, before they tie it in a bow or whatever, because they like it to feel snug. So they give it this yank, and that's and so you're putting a lot of stress on these points right here. And if you just tack it on this side and going out this way, and tack it on this side going this way, when he tugs that, it's going to pull off. So by putting it here, you've got it reinforced in two places. It's going to be harder for him to do it. These tapes will have to be replaced regularly. Um, not so much because they'll get dirty, which they will but mostly because of that tugging and the wearing on the rubbing on his clothing will wear them and they will have to be replaced. So that's why you don't do a, a whole lot of sewing with them just on the ends and tacking it in the middle instead of sewing it all the way down because it's all going to have to be ripped out when you go to replace it. So I'm going to I'm going to go with the twill tape and and all I have to do then is Sew the ends and tack it in the middle, and then my chasuble is finished, and we're ready to start small pieces, the small pieces. This is what the inside of it looks like now that it's sewn. I've sewed across the edges, and I've tacked a few places in the middle, and it's ready to be hung up. All right, so here is the back of the vestment. And now I'll turn around to show you the front. And here's the front of the vestment. Hangs nicely.